the Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce paid Elizabeth Dilling to come to Southern California, where she assured everyone that she had confirmed that UCLA was a hotbed of communism, presumably also free love. She did the same thing at Cornell. She did the same thing at Northwestern, trying to get all of these universities shut down. They wanted all of these universities shut down as evil, subversive communist institutions. They did not get the universities shut down. But a lot of very rich, very influential people were working on this as what they thought was like a mainstream political project. As weird as it sounds, this is a thing they really put at the center of their agenda. And the expert who they had work on all these campaigns, Elizabeth Dilling, she was a piece of work on her own. Um, not to put too fine a point on it, but she was a huge fan of Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party. Uh, before we got into World War II, the Nazis in Germany actually paid her expenses for her to repeatedly visit Germany and then go back to the U.S. and praise the Nazi party and Hitler's leadership. The German press had a nickname for Elizabeth Dilling. They called her the female Führer. She wrote a whole series of wildly anti-Semitic books about how Jews were secretly plotting to destroy the world and everybody needed to rise up against the Jews. Elizabeth Dilling was really something. She was put on trial for sedition in 1944. When the trial dragged on for months, the judge actually allowed her to take breaks from attending the trial every day so she could go back to her day job and pay her bills. Her day job was helping organize political rallies for the America First Party, where her specific job was leading the crowd in anti-Semitic songs, which she wrote herself. Elizabeth Dilling was bananas. But... This crusade to shut down the universities, to expose universities of subversive institutions that have to be shut down if we're going to save America. This has been sort of a recurring thing on the far right for a long time. I mean, that all happened in the, in the 30s. Um, but when, when Barry Goldwater was the Republican nominee for president in 1964, one of the minor scandals in his campaign, which had a lot of scandals, is that his campaign employed a full-time campaign worker um, whose organization um, had been shut down by the US government during World War II because it was an American fascist organization. Um, the guy, his name was Alan Zoll. He then reorganized himself into something called the National Council for American Education, which investigated American universities for subversion. And, and tried to shut them down for being communist or whatever. He put out pamphlets with titles like, They Want Your Child. Alan Zoll also somewhat famously testified in Congress that Felix Frankfurter shouldn't be approved as a Supreme Court justice specifically because he was Jewish. He said that was the grounds on which he, he thought that he shouldn't be confirmed. The, the shut down the universities thing has been an obsession on the far right on and off for a very long while. And its most famous proponents have just not been the best people, right? Just objectively, they, they have mostly been associated with not just the far right, but literally with fascism. Alan Zoll's organization was banned by the US government as a fascist group. Elizabeth Dilling was a fascist Nazi and Hitler enthusiast who spent her life crusading against Jewish people and who was put on trial for sedition, right? The shut down the universities thing does not have a good pedigree on the American far right. But it comes up in a recurring way. And we do have some new proponents of it now, which I think we should all be aware of, particularly ahead of tomorrow's vice presidential candidates debate. I think if any of us want to do the things that we want to do for our country and for the people who live in it, we have to honestly and aggressively attack the universities in this country. Ladies and gentlemen, the universities do not pursue knowledge and truth. They pursue deceit and lies, and it's time to be honest about that fact. Of course, I imagine that I don't have to convince any more of any of you that this is preposterous, that the universities in our country are fundamentally corrupt and dedicated to deceit and lies. Our universities are so committed to some of the most preposterous dishonesties in the world. J.D. Vance um, is now the Republican nominee for vice president of the United States. This is a speech he gave not that long ago where the title of the speech was The Universities Are the Enemy. He gave this speech less than three years ago in Florida. 
Uh, but, but, but the theme of this speech, this is sort of a recurring thing for him. You come to America, you learn that America is an evil place. You go to Harvard, you put your preferred pronouns in your biography, and you learn to hate the people who live in the American heartland, right? Harvard University Endowment, $41 billion of money. A lot of that is going to aggressively promote left-wing radicalism. Harvard University Endowment funds some of the most radical anti-American stuff that's out there. Harvard University Endowment pays a 0% tax rate. Maybe it's time to tax that endowment, seize the endowment, uh, actually penalize these endowments for being on the wrong side of some of these cultural war issues. Conservatives have got to wake up to this reality. So yes, I think there are ways for us to seize the endowments. We just have to be willing to actually do it. Right. I like that answer. I like that answer. Um, this is a podcast interview that J.D. Vance um, did, again, not that long ago. Uh, Elizabeth Dilling didn't succeed in shutting down the University of Chicago or the University of Michigan or UCLA. The fascist activist Alan Zoll didn't succeed in getting Harvard shut down when he tried, tried it in 1949. But J.D. Vance has a plan uh, to, do it, to do it now, at least to seize Harvard's endowment and then see what happens. And he has a plan to do this as part of a larger plan to destroy all the things which conservatives don't have complete control over. <laughs> and it's not just the universities, which is again on and off for a century, been a topic of the far, a topic of concern of the far right. But it also, for JD Vance, includes the private sector, businesses. Here he is in that same interview explaining that the right wing needs to start doing stuff that's that's really, really, really radical, including to businesses. And both J.D. Vance and his interviewer both clearly uh, find this very exciting. Look, capital money itself is increasingly taking a side in the culture war. And I hate to say it's not our side. Uh, it's not the side that I want to win. Unless you're willing to make these people feel economic pain, there's no serious way to fight back against it. The only way to push back against this stuff in a real way is to make these companies feel economic pain. And so, you know, there are a lot of ideas out there for how to do it. If you're not recognizing in this moment how crazy things have gotten and how outside the box we need to think, uh, then I, I think you're ultimately uh, not really serious about taking back the country. And yeah, look, I, I agree. We are in a late Republican period. If we're gonna push back against it, we have to get pretty, pretty wild and pretty far out there and, and go in directions that a lot of conservatives right now are uncomfortable with. Indeed, uh, I gotta say, among some of my circle, the phrase extra constitutional has come up quite a bit. We do need to take a much more aggressive stance, a much more yeah. muscular stance. We're gonna have to, you know, become a little bit more robust in our behavior. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. And look, um, you know, <laughs> I, uh, I think that what's so difficult about this moment for conservatives is that we love the country so much that we don't want to admit to ourselves how far gone things are, right? And I, and I, I hear this from a lot of conservatives. Look, it is still the best country in the world, but we are accelerating very, very quickly to a place that none of us want to go. And it's, it's, it's really time to wake up. Keep talking about extra constitutional. Yeah, yeah, we're accelerating to a place we really don't want to go. We're in a late Republican period. He doesn't mean capital R Republican. He means we're at the end of us being a republic. 